weird flex, but okay. Right? Let's push up. We can buff our Knight of the Ebon Legion, which is pretty cool. He'll survive. And if not, we're doing just a ton of damage. Well, if he's blocked, uh, or if he's not blocked. If he is blocked, we survive. If he's not blocked, we just do a bunch of damage. Down to four. Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to watch Hello Good Game. We're playing Rakdos Knights in traditional standard today. That means best of three. We've got the sideboard incorporated as you can see there. So this is an aggro style deck. Very low to the ground, very fast. So you should be winning games. Uh, turn four, turn five, right? Consistent aggro shenanigans. We are rocking Embercleave, which abs is absolutely amazing. Uh, we also have the Rotting Registor Demonic Embrace combo. Uh, what's cooler than Rotting Registor with Demonic Brace? You know, throw that Ember Cleave on there too. Um, <laughs> that's if we're going uh, absolutely obnoxious though. We can keep this much lower to the ground and be using our Embrace on anything from a Black Glass Paragon to a Knight of the Ebon Legion. So uh, if you do find any value within this video, I really encourage you to give it a thumbs up and share the channel out to a friend. It's a great organic way to help uh, me grow and continue this journey. As always, we take a look at the deck list in its entirety, breaking down each individual card. What do they all do? What do they all stand for? Then we're going to talk about the deck tech, the strategies and synergies behind all of the individual cards. How are they coming together to form a coherent archetype? Then we're going to watch some gameplay footage where we break down any play lines and interactions within the new Corset 2021 meta. You're going to get a feel for how this deck interacts with the rest of the environment, which is a key component to winning. You not only need to know how your deck works, but you're going to need to know how it works with the other decks because it's not always the same uh, strategies with each different deck, right? So uh, we're doing that. And then we close out with my final thoughts, uh, future plans for content, et cetera, et cetera. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We've got four copies of Knight of the Ebon Legion. This is a one, two in which we can pay three to give it plus three, plus three death touch until end of turn. And at the beginning of your end step, if you've dealt more than four damage to an opponent or they've lost more than four life this turn, I should say, you're going to get a plus one, plus one counter on Knight of the Ebon Legion. Four copies of Fervent Champion. This is a 1-1 one, one with First Strike and Haste. Whenever Fervent Champion attacks another target attacking Knight you control gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Equip abilities. You activate that target Fervent Champion. Costs three less to activate, which, I mean, a lot of the times is free at that point. On to our two drops. Four copies of Black Lance Paragon. This is a 3-1 with Flash. And when it enters the battlefield, target knight gains death touch and lifelink until end of turn. Two copies of Rimrock Knight, just a little bit of filler here. Another 3-1, he cannot block. However, he's got Boulder Rush attached to him as an instant adventure. Target creature gets plus 2, plus 0 until end of turn. You have to use the adventure before the creature, keep in mind. Stormfist Crusader times 4, one of my favorite cards within the deck. A 2-2 with Menace at the beginning of your upkeep. Each player draws a card and loses 1 life. On to our three drops, four copies of Drillbit, which can be cast for one as a spectacle, which means you have to have already dealt damage to your opponent this turn. Target player reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. Three copies of Rotting Registor, a 7-6 at the beginning of your upkeep. Discard a card. Two copies of Demonic Embrace, an enchantment. Enchanted creature gets plus three, plus one, has flying, and is a demon in addition to its other types. And we may cast it from our graveyard by paying three life and discarding a card from our hand. Murderous Rider times two, a two, three with a lifelink. When it dies, put it onto the bottom of its owner's library, and it has swift end tagged to it for another instant adventure. Destroy target creature or planeswalker, you lose two life. Three copies of Spawn of Mayhem. This is a four, four. Flying Trample, Spectacle for 3. At the beginning of your upkeep, Spawn of Mayhem deals 1 damage to each player. Then if you have 10 or less life, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on Spawn of Mayhem. Moving on, we have 4 copies of Embercleave. This is a 6 drop with Flash. However, it costs 1 less to cast for each target, uh, or sorry, for each attacking creature we control. And then when it enters the battlefield, automatically attach it to a creature we control. Equipped creature gets plus 1, plus 1. Devil Strike, Trample. Equip cost, once it is already on the field, is 3. Uh, and then that would go on to our Fervent Champion for free, which is pretty cool. So these spells are accompanied by 10 swamps and an unknown amount of mountains, 14 and 14, right? Uh, so we're splitting it down the middle, uh, which is really, really nice. Uh, 24 land in total. Um, so it's uh, 10 mountains, 10 swamps, and 4 blood crypts. We're playing traditional today, so we've got the sideboard incorporated here. 
two copies of duress for one target opponent reveals their hand you choose non-creature non-land card from it and they discard that card to shadow spears equipped creature gets plus one plus one has trample and lifelink we can pay one to have our opponents uh loot text proof and indestructible which is pretty cool and then we can also equip it for two uh organically soul guide lantern when it enters the battlefield exile target card from a graveyard we can tap it to sacrifice it exile each opponent's graveyard and then we can pay one to tap it and sacrifice it to draw a card three noxious grasp instant speed for two destroy target creature or planeswalker that's green or white gain one life two scorching dragon fires deals three damage to target creature or planeswalker if that creature or planeswalker would die this turn exile it instead and two copies of bone crusher giant this is a four three whenever it becomes a target of a spell or ability it deals two damage to that spell's controller it has stomp tagged to it which is another instant adventure damage can't be prevented this turn stomp deals two damage to any target and then finally, we have Stone Coil Serpent. This is a 0 0 with Reach and Trample. Protection for multicolored and enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. Uh, it's an X cost spell, so really nice scaling there. That's the deck list. Let's begin to break down some of the deck's strategies and synergies. So it is a very aggro based deck. We want to flood the field with three to four attackers right out of the gate. So this is most easily done with one and two drops. Knight of the Ebon Legion, Fervent Champion. Those are auto keeps basically if they're in your opening hand. Uh, just being able to ride that mana curve, one drop, two drop, three drop, or one drop, two one drops, two drop, or something like this, right? Always efficiently using your mana to flood the field with creatures is going to be your first objective. That's going to open up our Ember Cleave, right? Because it costs one less for each attack and creature. So if we have three mana and we've played a creature each turn, we'll have three uh, creatures on the field. And then on turn four, uh, no matter what we do, we should have three mana, three creatures, and then Ember Cleave. Uh, comes in for that six cost utilizing the creatures to reduce its cost um, so that's our main get like any aggro deck basically curve into three creatures use your cleave smash your opponent Mwah. you know right absolutely perfect there's uh, a little bit more than that to the deck right we also have our rotting regisaur which makes a perfect turn three drop uh, and if it avoids removal and you can ember cleave it good game right um so Rotting Registor is really cool. It doesn't have Trample, so it's easily chump blocked and we discard, which sucks. But Demonic Embrace can give it flying. So now you've got a 10-7 to smash with. So that's absolutely ridiculous. And your opponent's going to have to remove that immediately. So a very nice play, similar to Ember Cleave there. Um, you probably won't get your Registor with an Embrace and a Cleave all on it. And I really recommend that you spread your value. Don't concentrate your threat on one creature. That makes it... Uh, prone to single target removal and now you've just lost all of your advantage so if you can you know put a rotting regisaur out and then you've got a black lance paragon put your demonic embrace on your black lance paragon because now he's not just removing your reggie and just well there's a, like a little vanilla black lance there that's easy to deal with with lots of things right but if you've got the reggie and now you've got your paragon with the embrace or something else with the embrace now you have two uh, objects of threat that your opponent needs to deal with, both of them, right? So it's going to be a little bit harder for him to keep up at that point, as long as you're spreading your threat, not concentrating it too hard. Um, but again, if they don't have removal, putting the embrace on the Registaur is just dope. You get above their blockers and smash in and kill them in two turns. Speaking of evasion, Spawn of Mayhem is amazing. We do a lot of damage within this deck. Things like Stormfist Crusader is doing chip damage to our opponent automatically, um, and then we can get attacks in with the knight we can attack friend to buff it up so he doesn't want to block and lose his creature we get the one damage in we fake him out we don't buff it up now our spectacle has been activated which is great for our drill bit discard basically anything from their hand for one that's awesome and then we can also play our spawn of mayhem technically potentially on turn three which is oppressive this is my favorite creature within the deck uh severely underrated in my opinion it deals chip damage, right? So it's reactivating Spectacle. So you get one out. The second one's going to be easy to get out as well. Not to mention it activates Drill Bit, which is really cool. When you get below 10, you're going to be making him stronger. So it's going to be easier and easier to kill your opponent. It's non-legendary. So like I said, it stacks. Um, Spawn of Mayhem is a beast. And it has natural evasion through flying. So that's really, really nice. Um, another great target for your Demonic Embrace is your Murderous Rider because of the lifelink. So you can uh, be sure to gain that life. And then when you do sideboard, Shadow Spear will help you out there. Rimrock Knight is filler. I like to use this really early just with spare mana uh, to get that damage in. Or maybe late game when we have that flying or the trample double strike situation working with us. So either use it right away or late game. Um, it's just filler. Black Lance Paragon. Lots of the times I'll use this as removal. We can flash it in, uh, remove his creature because we have Death Touch and Lifelink. So 
Uh, not only do we remove his creature, but we're going to gain a little bit of life back from that as well. So it's like a nice cantrip there. Redding, Raging Registrar is going to make us discard. Stormfist Crusader makes us uh, draw. So we always want to be drawing before our discard. So make sure you're auto ordering uh, those. If you do have them both on the field, do your draw first and then your discard. So uh, you get more ability to discard something that you don't need, right? That's going to improve your win rate as well. Demonic, or sorry, Murderous Rider, uh, Swift End, Instant Speed Removal is pretty cool. Holding it up for three does kind of suck though. That's like a, a late game move only in specific decks where there is a big baddie that absolutely shuts you down. Uh, Elder Gargaroth comes to mind just because if it's 6-6 six, six ability, uh, Vigilance, and then it's gaining life drawing cards just so much, right? So there's specific cards that we do need to get rid of right away. Um, and again, our Black Lance Paragon is really nice for flashing that uh, Death Touch in as well. So uh, keynote, you can flash the death touch in and put it on the Fervent Champion. And because the first strike now has death touch, uh, he'll kill him immediately. So it won't take damage. So Fervent Champion and Black Lance can basically kill anything. Uh, if you flash the death touch on him, which is really nice pro plays there. Um, I think we basically covered the main board. If there's anything else, be sure to reach out in the comments below and I'll try to get to it. Let's talk about the sideboard duress, uh, non-creature, non-land. So for me, wilderness reclamation, right? Anything. Uh, maybe a Sharknado, Teferi, something that's really oppressive, non-land permanent, non-creature that you're going to get out of this board. Uh, perfect example right now is Wilderness Wreck. Shadow Spear, I love these in the aggro matchups, say versus Mono Green or Mono Red. Just grabbing that Life Link um, is really nice. You're going to be able to do damage, uh, basically just offset the damage that they do to you while gaining life, so that's nice. The Soul Lantern, uh, obviously any Uros, any Cats, things that go to the graveyard and come back, Woe Striders, stuff like this. Noxious Grasp, anything green or white. We take this for fairies, Nissas, Questing Beasts, right, etc., etc. Scorching Dragonfire, again, just more creature removal uh, and hopefully getting the exile on things potentially. Wolf Strider again comes to mind. Uh, the bummer about those decks is that they can instant speed sacrifice a lot of the times and just have your spell fizzle. But regardless, you need to get it out of the way. Uh, Mayhem Devil is another good example. Bone Crusher Giants, Priest of the Forgotten Gods, stomp her out immediately. And then it's a creature on the back end. So again, uh, more creature removal within Dragonfire and Bone Crusher Giant. Stone Cold Serpent, again, I love this against Wilderness Wreck. Matches its protection from expansion and explosion. It can get hit with the Borrower, you know, stuff like this. But at the same time, uh, just having a creature that can dodge their expansion explosion is very, very nice. So Stone Cold Serpent is pretty cool. It also can survive ECD because of the X cost. So it's a great way to have a big creature that's not really targetable by them. Um, and again, while you're sideboarding, my main strategy is to review the match. I go to view battlefield, uh, top right, I look at it, look at their graveyard, make sure I'm 100% aware of what they're doing, and then what was bad, what had bad synergy, and then what would be better than that. So lots of times, if there is creatures that we need to remove, we sub in our creature removal. If there's no creatures we need to remove, lots of times a duress or a, a something comes into mind for us to try to get those removal spells out of their hand. Lots of times they'll use field wipes like Cry of the Carnarian once that they know what we are. So we really like to get into their hand and just take that away so we can continue on with our aggro game plan. That's it, you guys. That was the deck list. This was the deck tech with slight sideboard guide, I guess you could call it. I really appreciate your time and attention. Before we get into today's gameplay footage, I want to remind you I am live on YouTube every morning, 6 a.m. Mountain Standard, live on Twitch every morning, 7 a.m. Mountain Standard, and we're in the Discord all day links for everything is in the description below uh and a big shout out to all of our recent supporters on twitch patreon on youtube making the increased workflow possible not only myself but the community as a whole uh gives you a huge round of applause thank you so much you guys really appreciate it and uh, everybody else just for your general time and attention as well thank you so much so enjoy today's gameplay footage rakdos knights bringing up traditional standard best of three in magic the gathering arena do enjoy and happy mythic hunting the land is good, but we're really just relying on top decks. Uh, which we should just still do, shouldn't we? Yeah, it's sad, but... To toss good land away is a very hard decision to make. He's mulliganed, which... We actually appreciate. Hopefully again and again. <laughs> oh, 
All right, just chilling, right? Maybe he's he's ducked out or our internet is gone. So okay, we're here. Tough call, but he's back. One, two, three, four, five, six. He only mulligans down to five. It's not so bad. If we can top deck a one or two drop, that's going to be ideal. A fervent champion, so we could drill bit, would be <laughs> very cool. Uh, Murder's Rider could get rid of the, the Pelt Collector, I guess. Barkai Troll is actually what we'll take. Ouch. I mean, it's not good. It's going to be very hard because green just piles in bigger and bigger creatures every turn. So if we can't get ahead off the start and put up some walls, then he can just uh, push into our removal while keeping his uh, original creatures or if he plays two at a time, right? It's going to be hard to get there. Our opponent's playing the Patience metagame. Another troll. Bummer. Let's put out our Rider. He can still attack for 6. We go down to 7 and then we can play our Embrace. And then we have ourselves a 5-4 which should be able to defend a little bit at least. Very nice removal. Nuts game. Sub in our removal. And our life gain. Let's push out the weaklings. I like drill bit, but at the same time. All right, um... Shadow Spear is gonna be very helpful. Let's just leave his hand alone, whatever. Playing first, please. That's a lot of land again. Whatever. No removal either. Probably should have uh, tossed this for a new hand. Most games are won through the mulligan, right? People have no respect for time constraints. This is ridiculous. What a hard decision to make. Wow. All right, Black Lantern, Flash, kill the Collector, gain three life. Sure. So 
start doing some damage. And again, we have our flash blocker for his uh, questing beast next turn. Yep. Non-creature, non-land, so he's getting our embrace. That's fine, we can easily remove the freebooter. So he's going to be taking our spawn here. Whatever. This is exactly what we wanted. Sorry. Hitting for 5. Down to 13. I don't want to be salty anymore because he's probably still going to beat us. <laughs> I just wish he would play a little quicker. He taps his druid to play the embrace on it. Nice. Instead of sacking his Fable Passage. Incredible. Let's keep in mind he did win match number one on us, so... Uh, we have to sit through here just to have that chance. We're at 23 lives still, so I'm not really worried. We're trading uh, the Black Lance with the Pelt Collector, most likely. That is fine, let's just keep his hand empty. Let's keep that Pelt Collector attacking. As long as no questing beast. Oh, I shouldn't even be saying it. Don't even think about it. Let's talk about, like, uh, you know, some crazy card that he can't cast. He's probably got Finale of Revelations or you know, Finale of Destruction. That's what it is, right? You know, let's just hang around a bit. It's always uh, a great strategy to climb rank is just to uh, rope your opponent. Or, like, right before roping them. Just enough time so you can say that you're not roping them. <laughs> Call the Death Dweller, cool. He takes our uh, Embrace back from our hand. So we should have saved our Giant and killed it on his end step. We're still pushing good amounts of damage in. Right? He can kill the champion. He thinks he can. Well, I guess he can see our giant. So champion dies, which is fine. Getting that 3 damage is really what we want. Chip damage will take him down to 7. So without life gain, I think we're in a good position. It's a big hit for six. Two turn timer. Perfect. That's game. Unless he's got removal. Bow Crusher Giants doing work there for us. A little bit of a misplay on our behalf, but that's alright. Let's drop a few cleaves.
Lads are pretty good here. We have Shadow Spirit for life gain. Bone Crusher Giant to smash him. Hopefully we just stack into our cleave. I'll probably keep it. Turn one Pell Collector. Totally fair and playable. We want to save that giant for his sailor though, that uh, freebooter. We should take the Pell Collector while we can though. Right. Get our Regio, put the Shadow Spear on it. Hopefully no single target removal. Which I imagine he actually does. Let's play our Giant instead. Try to bait some of that removal out. Looking for our second red mana symbol. Fable Passage is really nice. Thinza's Library. This is fourth land, so we have a block for Questing Beast. Um, we can trade with the Shaman. Trying to pull out his removal, just like this. That's really nice. Two cards left in hand. Yikes. We'll give him an oops, like we're uh, just landing out. He needs to use removal instant speed here. And again, we're just trying to get the removal out of his hand so we can play our Regisaur. We trade, plus gain 6 life. He's got Call of the Death Dweller. Yeah, nice. With Death Touch, I, I may add, which is less than ideal. Let's try to hit him with the hammer. The equip is two on our Shadow Spear, so less than ideal. Um, we don't have a cleave next turn unless we pull a land, but at least we have blockers. Forcing the removal. Midnight Reaper's fine, so no attacks. Oh, with the Death Touch he can attack. Which we should still trade. And he can attack with the Menace. He could double attack. Oof. What do we do here? What do we do? Do we risk it? It's for six. By golly, I think we do risk it. At the very least, we just put our Shadow Spear onto our Rotting Reggie. Right? We can't block the death touch, we can't block the menace. My turn, pull land. Pull land. Ah, uh, let's toss our swan. No land. Let's toss that over. Now we can offset any damage that he's doing. Plus we have Trample. So that's like pretty beneficial, I think. Let's end our turn. If we pull a land, we have lethal. If we can, you know, jump past removal. He's keeping his Pelt Collector to defend. If we can pull land, the first strike will nullify his death touch. Uh, the Hydra can't really fight us, so that's fine. We can double though, which is a good defender. Where's the land for Cleave, baby? 
Bossing the spear. That's not it. Let's play another Reggie. So we get rid of the death touch. And we still have that defender. And we'll use the life gain. Right? It's better to utilize the trample and die to the death touch than defend and die to the death touch. Right? At least we're still going over for five. He draws. Which is fine, but he also takes damage. Down to four, Stormfish Crusader now becomes much more viable, and we're at 22 because of all the life gain. It's a, a weird position, but again, he's at six land. He has plenty of removal. We take the three. He's trying to defend against us. Looking for a land. I feel like we might want to just push our Crusader and discard the Ember Cleave. Right? The Crusader's a sure thing. If we don't draw a land, the Cleave is dead. It's a hard choice, and we can equip the Shadow Spear and play the Crusader, which is really good. And just bank on it that way. Wow, he's going all in. Plenty of blockers, right? Wow, let's risk it for the biscuit. I think we need that land. I don't know. Oh my lord, what do we do here? And of course we pull the land. Isn't that hilarious? What a life to have lived. We're still over for quite a bit, right? He needs uh, to block eight. So this is seven, this is eight. We'll still get in for two, which deals two damage to him because of the Midnight Reaper, right? Uh, and then we'll deal two damage as well. So, you know, double blocking doesn't really save him. He needs to block with the Reaper, I guess. I don't know. I think this is just a good game. Doesn't matter. Oh, we don't get in for two, but this just does two. Okay. So he blocks the uh, the damage efficiently. We're at 27. He needs to 100% remove the Stormfist Crusader. Basically just banking on it. Or some form of life gain will really help him as well. But I hope, I just hope that we've got him in a in a good position. He needs two defenders. We do have menace. Shh! Don't say anything. <laughs> right? No blocks here. Down to twenty-one. Bark High troll. Two nice defenders. That does help against the menace plus the druid. One damage here, though. Please and thank you. Um, it's one mana of any color, which is a bummer. But we can kill one of his creatures, and it's going to deal that damage from Midnight Reaper. So we don't even have to attack, uh, which is really, really nice. Unless there's some form of life gain, or he can sacrifice his own thing. Heartless Act doesn't save him. Got him. Good stuff, and uh, a very good game. I like the hand. Three lands. One drop, two drop, three drop, four drop. That's actually super duper ideal. I mean, we could have taken nothing because he's going to grow spiral. No, really. I'm interested.
Let's check that hand out. Untapped mana gives me the heebie-jeebies. He counters it, and we can use our Black Lance Paragon. Putting it in uh, on our turn when he's tapped. Play our Embrace, which keeps him from playing a Wolf. Oh, okay. I see where this is going, friend. He probably has stupid Storm's Wrath. We have lethal next turn. Let's play a Reggie, it survives Storm's Wrath. So he needs to counter it and then Wrath us next turn. I wanted to save mana to instantly pump up the knight to survive it, but I thought playing Reggie would have been a good a good go. Life. Now we're just playing into counter spells. I should have went with my gut and tried to buff up the knight instant speed to get around it. Then we still would have had damage output. Well, if he doesn't have anything here, we've got him. No, he definitely does. This is silly. He's going to hit us for everything but a counter, right, with an explosion. Right, enough mana to hold up a counter, etc. That's game. Just what a fun matchup. We can pay two for a quench. I'm sure it's not going to save us, though. Embercleave for the win. That's our only hope. Awesome. It's like, take your time much? And he just keeps killing the creature too, which I find just silly. Like, he, we could have been dead already. This is annoying. Serpent dodges his expansion explosion. Nothing else matters. Shadow Spear could be cool, but let's just go aggro and try to get this cleave off before he beats us. Just so annoying. Watch him play at turn four, right on point again. That's kind of what upsets me. It's like, I play counter decks, I always struggle to get the counter off, or at least even find the counter. And these guys drop Wilderness Reclamation turn four every game, it feels like. Just stop it! Oh, well, that's a main phase growth spiral, nice. Alright, we're gonna Demonic Embrace, that should be quite enjoyable. 
As long as there's... Well, even if Storm's Wrath, our Reggie survives. That's game. There's 15 right there. That was enjoyable. <laughs> it is enjoyable when you beat them, but now he's on the play. He's going to drop it turn four again. It's just, it's so hard to deal with. Maybe he'll let us go first. <laughs> Three land plus a duress and a drill bit. I could get behind that. We'll drop it on turn two. Pull out a counter, and then we're still gonna take it. Oh, okay, bud. <laughs> we should have drilled it first. Watch him still top deck it and play it on turn four somehow. We wasted a lot of tempo. I'm sure he's got removal sideboarded in. Three Embercleaves. Are you serious? Maybe if we can flash our Paragon, have everything survive, and then pull a land. The spiral's on my turn. Which is better than last. Wow. Three cleaves. What a life. Here comes uh, his wilderness rack, right? <laughs> we need to top deck that land in a huge way. Come on. Oh. Alright, let's go for it. We have it next turn at least. Hopefully no counter. Okay, we're good. I hope all he pulls his lands for the rest of his full day. <laughs> oh. He would. Stormfist Crusader is going to fuel us. Unfortunately, it also fuels him. <sighs> Storm's Wrath, ladies and gentlemen. Gross. Land. Land! Down to five. Okay, okay. Lethal next turn. Never mind. This is ridiculous. He plays it. Oh my god. Playing this deck makes me want to throw up. Nothing wrong here. <laughs> yes. Pay life for land because you can. Hashtag counterspell.
Don't worry, he's only countering our Embercleave. It hits! Must be a Brazen Borrower. He takes four just to show us that he could have stopped it. No, we get it. Woohoo! It's so rewarding to beat these decks, you guys. I cannot even push that across to you guys. <laughs> Screw you, bro. This is a pretty cool hand, I'm not going to lie. Our opponent goes first, but I'm not even upset about it. Jengotha, so it could be Sacrifice. No, maybe. Yup. We have our two drop and then we can double drop a little bit later. If there's removal, we'll double drop. Oh, if there's a priest, we'll double drop. Man, does that ever suck. I hate priest. We get the clean attack through though, which is nice. Claim the first one, it's just gonna suck. Hopefully he plays it and then we can safely play our Reggie. Because we don't want to play our Reggie in this matchup because claim the firstborn. He just gets so much value. Act of Treason. A Tavier. I think we're good to play our Reggie though, probably. Just such good value, right? Like, he's killing two of our cards here. Plus he deals damage to us. Plus he gains mana. Plus he draws a card. This is silly. If he takes one of my creatures again? Okay, Judith. This isn't as bad. Or is it? If that's a claim to firstborn, or if he top decks one, I'm gonna lose my mind. No. I mean, three creatures is important to us. Basically need to pray that he's not pulling claim. Leave us alone. And then we can uh, deal one damage with our Crusader. Cleave the Reggie and just smash home. I hope. Keep in mind, he could just absolutely annihilate us here. Act of Treason, claim the Firstborn. Yup. 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 Well, that's disgusting. This is a hard matchup for us.
All right. Reggie's gone, right? The dopamine has just exploded within his brain after that play. He's just, you know, he's got it going on right now. <laughs> so let's not have that happen again. Such a good play. And to do it to someone twice in one match. <laughs> Woof. Playing first. That's so much land. We have to mulligan that. This is fine. We can kill the priest. Tossing a swamp. All right, we're off to a good start. We're flashing in our Paragon if we don't remove. We pulled a Lantern too, so we got a pretty good chance to win this match just on sideboard pulls. Trading with the cat right out the gate. Taking it from his grave. Sorry. Not sorry. And we can also exile uh, his grave now whenever we want. He gets his oven right after too. Nice. Play a priest, bro. We're kind of getting screwed in the fact that we've not pulled a single creature, so that's a bummer. Other than our paragon, but we had to get the cat. He's gonna have to oven that. That's fine. We're down to three cards on his hand, uh, albeit we have to only two. We draw to three though, that's nice. Second oven, oh lord. Interesting. We have removal, so let's just play the creature. You know, let's get some form of board presence in play. Yes, it would be nice to remove Jengotha, but... He's still got to put it in his hand. Sacrifice effects are triggered immediately. They don't go on the stack. I know who I'm going for. <laughs> or should we just cleave? Depends if we draw land. Sorry, not sorry. I'm pretty positive that when he chump blocks, we can activate our lantern and he cannot play it. 
right? So like right now, while this is on the stack, we sacrifice it. And I don't think he can replay it. He can, it did go on the stack, so that's a bummer. Uh, oops. I was pretty sure sacrifice things triggered immediately. Um, we've done that before. Uh, or had it done against us with the priest. I think it's when you target things to sacrifice, right? So if another thing taps and that thing targets things, that's where it doesn't go on the, uh, the stack. So a little bit of a misplay there. We're going to be okay, though. Just check out his hand. Doesn't want to show it to us. <laughs> That's why. Uh, he can just chump block us, so we'll stay back. These cats are going to be really, really annoying. We need to activate this Ember Cleave ASAP. When we have Trample, the chump block from the cat won't stop us. Jangotha will, though, which is sad. That's fine. It's all about the ovens. It's bad enough that they play the oven and take five minutes a turn, but then when they <laughs> get held up on your triggers as well, it's like, okay. We're in an unwinnable scenario here. These stupid cats. Attacking does nothing. The lifelink doesn't have trample, so it gets chump locked. And now all we've done is tap our defender, FYI. So we can't attack with the Murderous Rider until Amber Cleave comes online. If we attack with the Murderous Rider, we take an additional damage from his attack now instead of just the sacrifice effect. A third oven, are you serious? So this will activate our Amber Cleave next turn at least. What a lovely way to spend your day. <laughs> Clicking triggers. We could just give up. That's what normal people do here. One more. Come on. Gross. Can you imagine eating rank this hard in Platinum? All right, it's your turn. You can do all of that again. He's got 30 life too, so I'm just so over this kid. Good game. All right, playing first. It's always nice. Um, pretty heavy hand, but we'll keep it. We have both lands. And a two drop at the latest. Playing our mountain. Hello. Good game. Bird champion. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool.
Let's let it hit. We really need our third land. Nice. It's gruel. Interesting. The plot thickens. Hmm. We have lots of life. Let's just get into that hand. Take that questing beast. Nice. I'm happy to get that. So it's a bummer uh, that this requires our black land. Let's just get our Regio and try to get as much value as we can. Let's push Reggie in. I don't know, like. It's just hard to beat the Rotting Registrar, right? If you don't have removal, he's either forced to take the damage to lose in two to three turns, or he has to lose his creatures one by one blocking, which is just like unpleasant, right? We're flashing in a Paragon. I wish we were flashing in both. Oh, I was banking on pulling that other land. If he blocks one of our one defense creatures, that means Reggie gets in with seven, so I think that's worth it. All right, ten total. And now let's check out what that last draw was. Good game. Hmm, an ooze. That's interesting. We have two creatures in the grave. He has two creatures in the grave. That's four life. Plus four. It takes it to six. Right? Very nice. Down to 15. Looking for that second swamp. Amber cleave off the top would be pretty cool. Oh, we have to discard this. No! I forgot about that. That's the land we needed. Again, now he can block block our black lance and take seven. That's up to him. All we're looking for at that point is our demonic embrace to finish him off. I mean, you have to block the black lance, right? Ooh, we kill the ooze. That's awesome. Is that a good play? I think I would have blocked the paragon. He pulled another land. That feels bad. Let's just finish him off. It's a good game. 
Okay, so he's got Gruul. Let's take this to the sideboard and try to beat him there. This could be nice, just to pop off. Um, the Shadow Spear could be really cool too. Uh, Scorching Dragonfire is nice. It doesn't kill the Questing Beast though. I think Shadow Spear will be really nice. Drop our Rimrock Knight. And... Maybe drop some Ember Cleaves? That's hard. Black Lance Paragon is nice to flash in. We don't want to drop too many cleaves, it's still really nice to get. Alrighty. Our opponent does get to play first, which is nice. Against Gruul, I really hope just to kind of curve into a Reggie. Right? That would be ideal. I'll keep it. We have Noxious Grass, plus our Rider, and a 1-drop. For some reason, I think our opponent chose to let us go first. Right? We won the first game, and now we're still going first. What's that about? Not really worried about the Grasp yet. Robber's nice. Oops, let me turn that off. Sorry about that. Alright, so weird hand. Right? I'm going to kill the robber. Really wanting this Reggie. He doesn't drop beast till next turn. Serpent is annoying too though. Shoot. No Reggie. So we can uh, do some weird stuff here. Let's pay two life and pass. We'll say an oops like we messed up. Well, I guess we did. Nice bone crusher, bro. I was expecting a, a questing beast coming in off of that, so. Kind of wasted mana. We we're better off to play our knight. Gain a little bit of life here, which is nice. Trading with the Serpent, which was hard for us to deal with. Murderous Rider. Plus our Ebon Legion. Hopefully no Questing Beast. A robber, okay. Still got three. Plays his Giant. No attacks. Really? Alright. Thank the Lord for platinum based gameplay. I'm not sure how that happened. Uh, right? 
Let's get our demonic embrace in on our life gain. Five life, so now we don't even have to block his Bone Crusher Giant, it can just deal damage, and we're mitigating that through our life gain. The Great Henge is nice. This guy's dropping fire into an ooze. Come on. We're going to toss that ooze with our grasp. Before his mana untaps. Weird flex, but okay. Right? Let's push up. We can buff our Knight of the Ebon Legion, which is pretty cool. He'll survive. And if not, we're doing just a ton of damage. Well, if he's blocked. Uh, or if he's not blocked. If he is blocked, we survive. If he's not blocked, we just do a bunch of damage. Down to four. And we're at 23, so... We should really have no problem closing this match out, as long as we're not removed here. We're good. He gets a draw. I'd say we're good. I think so. I hope so. Good game. I don't know, just smash the druid, right? If he gets a chance, right? Another ooze? That's so good. He's got a lot of mana this time to dump into it. Right? Nice! <laughs> nice, bro. That uses all his mana, though. So, uh, he can't really win through the ooze anymore. I think he could have just gained enough life through the ooze to offset our damage. And then er, try to bank off more draws. That's fine. This is just game. Maybe another potential misplay there. But again... That's kind of one of the benefits, uh, being solo within rank at the start of the season. There's a lot of wiggle room. Just gets that last exile for that little bit of life. Emmer Cleave was cool, but I think uh, just, he just overextended. Probably would have ended the same way, but nonetheless, our opponent let us go first, which is like unheard of. Well, we just seen a similar hand to this. We're gonna toss it. It's way too much land. Hey, at least this looks good. Uh, it's a hard toss, but I do love casting Drill Bit for one. Right, double Drill Bit next turn, why not? If we can get away with it. Yup. What are we dealing with here? Wow. He's got nothing that deals damage. Way to kill this bedevil. Right, it kills our Reggie. And then we also want to kill... Well, the Drill Bet can't get at us. He can cast it for three, though, next turn. Let's get rid of this Drill Bet. That way we can pull land, play our Reggie, go from there. Pull out his secondary cry.
We're stuck on land, so hopefully he floods. Spot of Mayhem's protected from his cry, so that's a good push. He takes it anyways, which is fine. Can he hit us for two? That would be crazy. Alright, let's take this uh, drill bit here before we attack. Flashes his Paragon in, nice. So he'll have to discard for that. So he can cast it here, but again, having to discard whatever he just drew, paying 3 life, Tapping his creature, and then we hit for 11. Alright, alright. Almost steals with Reggie. <laughs> Not a bad position. Hit for 11. He doesn't block. Somehow, he's going to have to not pay life here, because he can't. He needs to organically draw it. Maybe an Ember Cleave, but even that falls incredibly short. Removal is his best bet. So, the chip damage doesn't happen, so now he can just chump block. We get the kill, though, that means. Land and we win. He kills himself. Good game. Alright. This looks like mono black. Rakdos shenanigans just like we are. He's got plenty of removal. Let's just take that duress. The uh, Scorching Dragonfire would be cool too. Maybe uh, get rid of his uh, like Bone Crusher Giant, not Bone Crusher Giant. <sighs> Gutter Bones, <laughs> the one that can come back over and over from exile. Uh, that would be really nice. We will, uh, I think, open up our cardboard live while we wait. I don't think that's running. And then that will update our deck list for everybody on Twitch, because I know we've been having a few requests for that. It's uh, good to go now. Our opponent is really uh, sideboarding like crazy, which worries us. Right? How much more removal can you put in when you're already main decking Cry? <laughs> right? Let's just uh, chill out, man. I think he has uh, like two minutes as well, so quite a bit of time. However, one of the benefits of playing in best of three within low rank, the player resolves not quite there, and people have stuff to do, so sometimes, just sometimes, our opponent. Uh, they take off after one match, right? So you get that second one for free. And that's always really nice. We do have to pay life here, but I think it's a good start. Spawn of Mayhem, if we can just flex that out, 
again as early as we can. I think that's going to be really nice. Our opponent plays first. Fervent Champion. Blocker out. Does he play second? No, but it equips for free. Shoot. Okay, that's something. Let's check out this hand. Let's just take our damage, sure. We're not blocking, so we may as well just go through with it. Oh, down to 11, not good. I actually don't mind the Crusader, I don't think. We can buff our knight to kill the crusader or just let the damage go through and play the spawn which really really helps us right down to 10 though that's a bummer he needs removal for it don't you dare oh that's so good nice no blocker's gonna hit for six that's gonna be game This will deal damage to us as well. Right, so we take one here, and we take one on the start of our turn from spawn. So we have to kill him next turn, basically. Which isn't happening. Nice. His menace as well. Cry. Bone Crusher Giants come in. The rest goes out. We know he's running aggro. Let's take our exiles as well. Drill bit was pretty cool, but we're better off just to match his style. Shadow Spear could have been cool for the life gain as well on the Reggie. Our opponent's definitely doing a better job sideboarding, I think, taking his time. We should have taken our Shadow Spear. But again, Reggie's prone to removal, so it's like we're losing value now. Okay, I will 100% keep this. Nice hand. Loving it. He's playing slow. He needs to look for removal. Stormfist Crusader will help him find it, sadly. We're going to use our Demonic Embrace on our Crusader to push it to 3 so it survives the cry. Our opponent playing slow again. Ooh, we might push out our, our spawn, to be honest. With his Fervent Champion, I don't think we're going to see a cry, so... Let's push the agenda. Hit for 7, down to 10.
He needs to kill Fervent Champion. Right, a cry would still be really good for him here. Nope. Let's see where we get with our attack. We get hit, sure. We still hit for five, down to four. And here comes our Spawn of Mayhem, which also needs to be removed. Right, so we've just got him, uh, you know, trying to get out of that hole every turn. It's really nice to always go first as an aggro deck, that's for sure. Right, now he's forced to remove the spawn, which uses all of his mana, which will allow us to use Demonic Embrace on our Crusader and win the game. Well, this takes him to six, actually. But the chip damage that Crusader does takes him to five, and then, so we still get it. Step on him, just for a little extra sauce to close out the match. Didn't take too long, just one card, okay? <laughs> Alright, Rakdos Knights coming back, hopefully for a win streak here. Okay, hopefully we can recover from that. Flashing our Paragon in, just putting an Embrace on it. Alright, Paragon's in play. He could have an Unsummon, but... I mean, at a certain point, let's just go for it. Aggro, baby! If it survives, we cleave on it. All right, we're holding up our removal. All right, so with that being said, we're playing our creature. It's important to me to be cleaving or at least attacking every turn. All right, we have Grixis. Both eliminates used up. So that's nice. Pretty lucky for him to have two of them sitting in his hand. <laughs> right? Narset in play. Just loving that. Searching for whatever he wants. Planeswalkers included. More land. This has been just uh, a really fun time for us here. On the, the land patrol. Keep an open mind. Pulls a Chandra. Uh, good game. Let's pull out and try to sideboard against that. Oh, what a terrible draw! I mean, Duress is good, I guess. But at the same time, he's just going to pull more Planeswalkers.
We don't need life gate, giant, no creature removal. Planeswalkers, maybe, but... Drill bit may be better. He's sad against cries and stuff, so it's... Ugh, it's gonna be a race. We're gonna have to get there quick. All right, we had to toss for both colors of lands. We have to get our knight in first. Now we just pray that there's no, uh, Cry of the Carnarium. Hi. Alright, the first eliminate. Still get four damage. Thought Erasure on a land. Loving it. Could have been an Embercleave for all he knew. Both is gone. He's looking for a sweeper. He's totally tapped. Hit for nine. Down to four. Cry no longer works. He needs a ritual of soot. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Let's uh, let's try to fix that up again. And now I know he's gonna try to sideboard sweepers. So I think it's really important to uh, kind of grab those, right? We want to kill him before his planeswalkers hit. So the murderous rider is what we would use to kill his bolus. We're not doing that. We're just going to try to uh, aggro, aggro, aggro. Boys, my coffee's gone cold. Our opponent is uh, really thinking about the sideboard a little bit more carefully here. Which is totally fine. Rakdos Knights may be something that performs slightly better in best of one, uh, just due to how weak it is against the sweepers. Um, something to keep in mind. It's a good hand, I think. I'll allow it. We pull a nice uh, follow-up as well. Could have an unsummon potentially. I don't know how annoying that is. We should drill bet. Rather than buffing our damage, let's get into his hand and protect us from sweepers. Two extinction events. Oh no. That's not good. Basically, you just pull another discard off the top. Which we don't. Need to get a two drop in. So that's actually fine.
Oh, we don't have the second black source. Shoot. Let's end our turn. Let him take his. Flash our Paragon in. Push our Black Lance up. We deal 4 damage, and now he's more inclined to hit the Extinction Vent on 2, because he gets 2 creatures, rather than 1 on our Knight. Right, your go. Yeah, okay, perfect. We get to keep our Knight. Of the Ebon Legion, that is. I guess they're all Knights. And now, he's down to 10. Fully tapped. We hit for 7. Down to 3. I'd say that's pretty close. He needs single target removal on our knight. And he also needs to deal with the Fervent Champion somehow. Ritual of Soot gets us really good. There's the Ritual of Soot. Okay. This guy's going us. <laughs> oh, he's got lots of removal, baby. We need creatures off the top. Uh, <laughs> he's saying you're going our turn. Just, this is getting, uh... A little bit toxic real quickly here. <laughs> Come on, creatures! Shoot. Let's toss the land. My schemes are never ending. Ah. Uh, good game. Double lands off the top. Nice. My intellect. We tried our best. We got him pretty close, right? And then he just had perfect answers, and we've top decked nothing but land. You have no Another land and we're gone. I, I mean, explore. even if we don't pull land at this point, he's drawn so many cards. He has instant speed removal. Uh, maybe not because he's played a Chandra. Right, two mana. Could be a borrower. Holy dog, we get a Stormfish Crusader that's immediately removed by him. Okay. Okay, okay. We understand. Bad luck today with this uh, Rakdos Knights here. Back down to zero wounds. So this hand is uh, very messy. There's not much aggro here. We're gonna toss it and be punished. Good lord. Keeping five. Three champions. I mean... Let's hit the casino, boys. This is going to be a very weird match. Maybe he thinks coming out of it, we're mono red, though? Don't you play Knight of the Ebon Legion? I mean, it doesn't matter so much, but it'll stack up against us. Six damage, turn two, loving it. 
Hopefully, he's not got a lot going on here. And hopefully, we pull a black uh, land source so we can get this drill bit firing. Or just pull more aggro for mono red. That was hard mulligans. That was not good. We should have kept that opening hand. Right? Maybe he's just like in shock. No, he's here. One of the benefits of being in Platinum is that maybe the player resolve is not as high as within Mythic. Shoot, we need that land, boys. Still going all in. Middle. I think we still need to do this one. I think we got it right. No! Oops. Man, that shell game, it's hard to get always. Can't believe we messed that up. What a rook mistake. Into it, Reggie. So that sucks. I don't know if we pull a land and then a cleave. It was a bad, a bad get for us off the start. So if he drops the Demonic Embrace, uh, I think we can just go ahead and pop into the next match. That's a lot of damage to the hen house. Nice. Okay. So we got screwed on land. He thinks we're mono red. Let's take it into match two. We know he's got big creatures. Um, spear could be nice. It's a little life gain, right? A giant tube doesn't stop Reggie, though. I say we just try to beat him. But if we can put a Shadow Spear on our Reggie, I kind of like that. Joey from Twitch says if we just hover over our creature for a second, we can see where the uh, that buff is going. So, <laughs> you know, the more you know. We get the same style situation here, which is upsetting to me. Right? We need both lands to get rolling. Okay, this is better. We're tossing the forest. Two drop, three drop. I'll allow it. Oh, of course he would. Hopefully he attacks and taps, and we can just uh, flash attack and then put our mayhem in. Dang it. Couple options here. Since he's blocking, we're not doing damage, we may as well gain life from the whole, uh, like, transaction. It's what it is. I was hoping we could juke through, not have it blocked, and play our spawn of mayhem. Nice. He's tapped, though. Let's get a spawn of mayhem out. It can block this gutter bones. And then we can play our Reggie to match his. Hopefully coming back from this bad start.
I'm gonna take it. Let's race him. I know he's at 17, but we got this. I'm sure he's got removal. Let's throw another flyer out. Right? Spawn of Mayhem getting work done. So I need to... Remove Spawn of Mayhem now on my end step, and then he needs to rebuff his Gutter Bones with Demonic Embrace or some form of haste that can deal three damage. He takes five. Okay, I think we've won this match now. Uh, our Spawn of Mayhem, as soon as it's our turn, will trigger. Take him down. The Dragonfire would grab this. I wouldn't mind exiling his gutter bones, right? Our opponent did get mana screwed, which uh, was to our benefit there for sure. Kind of allowed us to uh, get out and get ahead of him. That's one of the things with the uh, mono black aggro deck, though, is it's, it's pretty tight on lands. I think Demonic Embrace and Reggie are your highest drops for three, so. Once you do get to three, it's pretty easy just to maintain. However, I mean, there is some benefit, um, you know, having multiple mana, four, five, six, right? And then you can do multiple drops on each turn. You're playing more than one card, um, especially more, maybe more than one of those big drops, right? Like the Reggies, etc. Land looks psycho again. What is up with this? I mean, at least we have it to get there, but really relying on those top decks. This Ember Cleave makes me smile, though. That's so much land. We should really mulligan this, I think. But if we get mana screwed... It's better than not. Perfect. That really saves us, just having that early game interaction. We need more of it, too. Oh, great. Ooh. Wasn't well, that interesting? Getting hit. Uh, he probably has removal, though, which will really, really suck. Right, if he removes our Reggie, that's gonna be game. Just have lost too much value. Or even a demonic embrace at this point is a little bit aggressive. We're uh, a couple turns away from our cleave, one at least. He's gonna make me discard before he removes it. Sly dog. Here's the removal. Yeah. Dang it. Alright, we're getting bullied out here. I'm trying to, you know, represent this deck, but it is not working out. I mean, he is down to one card, but I think he's got huge field advantage right now. I mean, Ember cleaving it just leaves us open to attack. We're 
Right, he gets the chip damage there, he can buff this. Good game. We'll just trade. Knight buffs up. That's game, because when the scorpion dies, right? And more land. Wow, that was a lot of land there. Yikes. Alright, two lands. Stormfish Crusader, which I believe is a little bit underrated. We got our Reggie, if we really want. We might just push Reggie in all honesty. Where well, are in Platinum today? It's the, uh, I guess, second day after reset. I play pretty early in the morning, so reset had happened after I'd logged off for the day. Um, so there's probably been about uh, like 20 hours or something of ranked already. So we're a little late to the show, but regardless, um, when you're in Mythic, you drop down into Platinum again. So it's quite the climb back up. And typically, it is harder uh, at the start. So we're going to be milling two cards every time he draws here. Land, land. That's really good for us, actually. Ooh. But our Stormfish Crusader really helps him. Ooh, a Demonic Embrace. That's nice. Let's toss up. And then our second knight, both of them will click up because they've done more than four damage this turn. We mill two cards. So our Stormfist Crusader really helps uh, the mill here. If we can pull this third land and preferably a uh, swamp, we have lethal. Well, regardless, we have lethal through uh, the knights if we pull a land. He needs to remove our creatures? <laughs> I mean, it's a good mill, don't get me wrong. I just, I'm not sure it's enough. Well, this is really nice. Uh, just for the haste. Paying life here. Um, yeah. Just pumping our knight, easily taking out his uh, remaining health points. So the mill's not really great for him, just because uh, we're able to do so much damage so quickly. Now he doesn't really have a lot of creatures, more planeswalkers that I can tell. So I'm not sure Murderous Rider is high value. We may be better off to use a, a turn one Duress. And then we're just trying to scoop out uh, his removal spell. So if he's got a Shatter, uh, an Extinction event, something like this, we're just trying to hunt that card out of his hand. So we can continue our game plan and not be uh, really interrupted by him at all. Land's good. We should keep it. More of the same. Brazen Borrower is kind of something I don't want to see him sideboard in. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny how we're able to call that, right? Or maybe if we keep this and just move that. There we go. All right, so we're holding our land. He's got a Reggie out. Which is very annoying for us.
We can Black Lance Paragon kill it. We can also trade with it right here. So he's having to discard here, which is nice. Mirror March, okay. That's to copy his tutelage. The Blessing? Okay. So is he putting the Tempo out, or the Reggie out, just to uh, kind of like stop us? Is he not going to attack with it, I wonder? Nope. Well, we're just going to put Flying on our, uh, our Paragon, I think. Right? It's a good hit. <laughs> now he's got a discard, which is nice, but Treacher's Blessing really helped him refill his hand. He needs to kill this Paragon. I'm sure he's got more Borrowers. Crusader could be really nice, um, just to do that chip damage. Let's see what he's got. I imagine at least a borrower. Okay, shark. Shoot. Okay. Could be worse. I might want to be discarding this later, so I'm going to hold on to that land. Well, playing 5 is beneficial. So he's discarding here. Teferi is kind of annoying. We could have put it on our Fervent Champion, actually. That would have been smarter, because this first strike. I can no longer stand Whoops. By and watch. Yeah, we kind of figured he would bounce our knight. To be honest, I would just take the damage. Pay our life, toss the land, which sucks, but it's best. Down to two. And, you know, I say we just put out this chip damage. Right? That's kind of forcing him to have to deal with both threats. Trust very pluses. He could easily have access to a shatter. No, negative. And uh, just like that, Rachnos Knights winning back to back matches within Platinum to start off the season. Here we go, Mythic. Okay, so Rakdos Knights, pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, this deck smashes best of three, makes it a little harder. I think the deck would be super good for climbing rank in best of one. Uh, you know, maybe trim some lands and add some sideboard cards to there. Uh, that'll get you through those weird matchups. I think it's an easy deck to sideboard against. Luckily, it is an aggro deck, so we always have the ability to win turn four, turn five consistently. So it's not the worst for best of three, but I think it could be stronger best of one potentially. So let me know your guys' opinions on that. Are you going to play this in best of three? Are you going to play it in best of one? Let me know. As far as changes go, you know what? I, I might not change anything. I could sub a cleave out for another embrace potentially. Um, but I think this deck's very, very fine-tuned. So uh, happy hunting. I think you guys are going to have a good time climbing rank with this this season. And uh, thanks for watching. Again, really appreciate your time and attention. All the recent support on Patreon, YouTube, and Twitch in our um, 
programs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, you guys are so awesome. Make sure to link your account so you get access to our VIP chat in Patreon. We're giving in-game codes there uh, in bulk. So that's really, really cool. Check it out. Let me know. Uh, links for everything in the description. Live on YouTube at 6, live on Twitch on 7, Discord all day, yada, yada, yada. Like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to share your friend. Hit the bell icon. And more importantly than everything I've said today, you guys, go have a great day. Take care. Peace. Nice.